Hi there and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts for ASPE. Uh, in this session we're looking at how we learn skills and the different stages of learning as we develop them. So how do we know that we've actually learned a skill? That's the first thing that we're going to take a look at. All right. So the characteristics of learning or how do we know is going through that process of learning after we've completed some kind of practices so the result of some practices we're presuming that the skill is now relatively permanent there's other characteristics of a skill that we looked at in previous sessions so does it uh, look like something that we recognize as a forehand or does it look like a backhand is it aesthetically pleasing does it look like it's relatively effortless so all of those things can help us decide whether we've actually learned something or not also other things are the fact that it's maybe not a one-off I might be able to hit a winning forehand but let's not say that that's because of it's a learned skill it might be just a fluke so it's got to be the result of some kind of practice and the skill has got to be relatively permanent so if we're taking Mr Federer over here we can almost guarantee that he can hit the forehand uh, winning shot on a consistent basis so therefore that skill is relatively permanent it's not the result of a one-off so let's take a look at this little video here and we'll see whether we think the same is true for the person performing these skills so is this aesthetically pleasing does it look effortless Does it look like a backhand or a forehand that we could recognize? Okay. So we could argue not. So we could presume that it may be uh, a successful result, maybe a one off. Um, is it the result of practice? It didn't really look like he practiced it a lot because it wasn't aesthetic, it wasn't effortless. So therefore, the skill may not be permanent okay so how and why do we check for learning first and foremost we check for learning through observation and through some kind of measurements or tests so if we had a target hit for example or if we're doing a conversion in rugby then we could say that the target is the posts and therefore we're seeing whether the skill has been learned and also we can see whether it looks like someone else who's previously performed the skill so therefore through observation and then why we actually check for learning is to give meaningful feedback and then give some kind of targets for somebody to strive for okay let's get on to the main section here then Fitz and Posner uh, both uh, turned around and said that there are three different types of learning cognitive, associative and autonomous so these are known as the stages of learning we to look at each one of those individually so the cognitive stage is known as the initial phase or the first phase of learning so for this to happen somebody needs to have a demonstration some kind of guidance of how the skill is supposed to actually look if you don't know what it looks like then how are you going to perform it if you don't know what it feels like how are you going to perform it so you need some kind of demonstration and this is obvious when you think about it you think of many times when you've had a coaching session and somebody gives you a demonstration that's all they're looking to do is give you guidance on the skill this initial phase also is quite consistent with a lot of trial and error and this is due to the lack of coordination or flow you don't know what it's supposed to feel like so therefore you're going to struggle a little bit to start with the performer as well they've got lots of things to think about because everything is brand new so what they'll do is probably have to think about their foot position where the ball is coming their arm position their grip loads and loads of different things and for all this to take place this information processing it becomes a bit much so they don't quite know what they're supposed to be attending to or thinking about or concentrating on and you hear coaches say concentrate on this part concentrate on that so as we've mentioned before when we're giving feedback we don't want to give too much of it so we just want to give a little bit of guidance and therefore the the person who's learning can selectively attend to the particular piece and that's the key term there attending selectively so this second phase, the associative phase, also uh, known as the practice phase. Now with this, there are errors, but they're fewer 
um, and the basic skills will have been grasped but not quite as significantly uh, well as somebody who's in the final stage. There is a lot more coordination shown and, and for this reason sometimes this is the longest phase and most people don't actually leave this phase. So if you think about these two examples, these two people here are perfectly capable, we're presuming that they're perfectly capable at hitting the golf ball. <clears throat> so they've had their initial practices and they, they know how to perform the skill. The same with down here, this guy knows how to play football, knows how to pass, knows how to run. But there's still going to be some errors in there. And that's what this phase is all about. So that's why we call it the practice phase. Another thing that the learner has got is the kinesthesis. They know how it's supposed to feel. And that in itself is really, really important and a difference from the first stage. With this stage as well, the, the person who's developing the skill can receive a lot more feedback and they can attend to relevant cues. In other words, they can get told about a specific part that they need to focus on. And they can also work in a variety of different situations. So you can run practices and you will see people perform the skill. Now this final stage, the autonomous phase, is considered to be the advanced stage. So this is where learners execute the skill with a minimum amount of conscious effort. So can you think of any examples where somebody can perform a skill, doesn't really look that hard, effortless almost? One that always springs to mind with me is this man, Mr. Federer. So we could easily say that he can hit a backhand and a forehand without even thinking about it. He's probably attending, selectively thinking about other things. For example, the position of the other player, what shot he's going to play next. So this is known as spare attention. They can focus on other things than actually just performing the skill. The skill is established in the long-term memory. Think about this guy here, Dan Carter. So he doesn't have to worry about holding the ball. Uh, all he's thinking about is this sidestep here. And this guy here, because he was so good, he's probably even thinking about where the support run is coming from. So this guy here. So he's going to step and go this way, but he knows that he's already going to give the ball back in, which is quite an advanced skill. And they're able to do that because they're in this autonomous phase. They're not thinking about just sidestepping or just hitting the ball. So with a closed skill, it can be practiced so it becomes habitual. And the other thing that happens at this stage is people have the confidence to detect and correct their own ever errors. <laughs> but one of the other interesting things about this stage is you can actually regress. So if you don't continually practice at a high standard, you can move back from the autonomous phase into the associative phase from the previous. So Good practice is always important, even for the best people. So let's have a look at this uh, video very quickly. And I want you to see if you can identify if, uh, pick one of the players out, watch it a couple of times, see if you can find someone who's in the autonomous or the associative or even the cognitive. Let's have a look. Nice. Okay, so let's take a look. Alright, so there 
I want you to pick out somebody you think is the autonomous or the associated or even the cognitive and then try and explain why. And that's the important part. So it's not only identifying the stage, it's saying, well, why was that person able to, why are we able to say that that person is in that particular stage? Okay, so we'll look at these further in our next session. Um, hopefully that will have helped and thanks very much.